before we get started, because they don't like us to start before she turns on the recording thing. But um, I wrote down the four things that I came here to talk to you about. Of these things, was there something I missed? And I know you probably don't understand what I mean by branding and then how to double your business, but how to double your business is how you get leads from your sphere and database. And then branding is just like, why you in terms of scripting? So is there something that you came here to learn that you want to learn from me? And I'll write it here because I don't want you to like have come to like learn something and then leave going, she didn't help us. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, that's a good question. So is this geared towards like cold call or just any sales? So um, both. So this is actually built on like, so it, um, so I tend to think that honestly, having dealt with like most salespeople, that most salespeople feel the most comfortable calling cold leads, right? And so they'll ask a cold lead for a referral before they ever ask their sphere. So it goes into like, mm -hmm what I think are advanced closing skills, right? So how do you ask a client that you close a year from now for more referrals, right? Like I looked at your face and you went, right? <laughs> uh, so that's what this is gonna be about. Uh, oh, I, oh, so I can just start? Okay, cool, good, close the door. I mean, they'll walk in late and that'll just be the habit. Thanks, Em. Okay guys, well thank you so much for coming to the Closing Skills class. Uh, for those of you who have never met me, my name is Lizzie Wolfer. I've been a lender in the Valley uh, for the past, uh, well since 2008, however many years that is. Um, and what makes me qualified to teach the class guys is that I am number six in the country for all home loans closed period. Right, so I deal with tons of real estate agents, tons of clients, and I have learned a thing or two about cold calling. I actually also started my career in a call center for mortgages and I was calling like six month to year old leads, right? So I got really, really good with rejection. So most of the skills that I'm teaching you today, I have done and practiced, implemented and trained to my team, okay? So um, we're gonna start first and foremost with just the straight up basics and then we're gonna go on to advanced skills, okay? So first thing I wanna talk about is tone. And this is probably the thing that gets neglected the most, but how do you call people, right? Most people are like, hi, this is Mary Trujillo from My Home Group Real Estate, right? Is that something that you said in the past if you were calling a lead? Sort of. What is your? I'm like, hi, this is Mary. How are you today? Perfect. How are you today? So we're going to write that with how are you right here. Okay. So here's the deal. You have 30 seconds to get yeah. somebody to let you talk longer than 30 seconds, yeah. okay? And so tone is everything. So you wanna make calls with as much energy as you can. So if you're sitting down and you're tired, you need to stand up and do a couple jumping jacks, you gotta get your blood flow going. Before I make a whole bunch of calls, I straight up self-talk, I'm not kidding. It's like, you got this, you're a badass, you can do this, you close so many deals, right? I make my team do this chant where I'm like, who are we? And they scream, Bill Moore, because that's the name of my branch. I'm like, what do we do? We close more loans, my whole team screams it. And then we get it, because you have to have really good energy. The thing is, if you say who you are and what your name or like your title is or how are you, people are like, who the heck is this? So I always call, I'm like, Zeb? Hey Zeb, so great to talk to you. Look, I saw you were uh, searching online for properties in 85018. I've got an amazing one to talk to you about, right? So I'm just straight up going into whatever my sales pitch is, right? And if I ever leave a message, here's what it also sounds like. Hey Zeb, it's Lizzie, give me a buzz, 480-593-4510, click. What does that sound like? Yep, they're like, Lizzie. Lizzie, they're like Facebooking me, they're searching me, they're like, how did I know her? Did I meet her at a bar? Like, what the heck happened, right? This straight up happens. I've had people be like, uh, like I had this guy Brian call me back after a call night. He's like, hey, Lizzie, and the whole time trying to figure out who the heck I was. It was super funny. So just know that if you do this, right, like, you will get it. Like, I promise you, people will call you back because they just wanna know who the heck you are. Okay, straight up. So now, after that phone pitch, right, so after I 
said, hey, I saw you were looking on homes. I found a great one for you on 8501A. Okay? You're just telling them right now that you have found them the thing they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're going to say one of two things to you. Oh, I cannot buy. <coughs> or yes, tell me more. <coughs> right? It's going to be one of those two things in a variety of versions. Oh, I found out and I can't qualify or don't have the money or, you know, how do you know that? Right? It's just going to be something negative or something really exciting. So people, and this is something to write down, are either moving towards something, right? Or they're moving away from something. If you do not match them where they are at, they will hang up on you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if somebody says, I cannot do this, I say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Did you recently get pre-qualified? Okay? I don't, here's what I don't do. I don't go, oh my God, of course you can qualify. Right, there's so many programs, right? Because this is what a lot of people tell us to do. They're like, there's so many programs, you've got this, like don't worry, we feel like we wanna be their cheerleader. Now, at least I know the women in the room are gonna be on my side here. How many of you like it when people just offer you solutions to your problems without hearing you out first? Okay, no one. No one loves a solution before they've been heard unless you're a dude and you're just like, oh cool, right? Like women especially want to be heard. Most people who fear, right, because that's where this is coming from, they fear that they cannot qualify or they've been embarrassed because someone told them they can't qualify. I promise you don't want to go through the exercise of feeling embarrassed again. So you have to say, well tell me a little bit more about that. Right, that's a good line, write it down. Tell me a little bit more about that. Have you recently been pre-qualified? Did someone recently tell you? Right, and then they'll tell you a little bit more about their story, okay? Now, you don't ever jump in with solutions without their permission. So in order to get their permission, you listen to them and you say, are you open to a little bit of professional feedback? Right? Now, here's what's awesome about asking people if they're open to feedback. No one wants to be unopened to feedback, right? Like, it's just like a, a, a psychological thing. Like, if you, if you don't, you're a, a jerk. You know, no, I don't like your feedback, right? So just know that if you say, are you open to feedback, like I swear, nine and a half times out of 10, right, you will get a yes, <clears throat> okay? And once they give you the yes, then you can say, well, let me tell you, I work with a really great loan officer and she specializes in borrowers with credit scores under 580. She helps them, she works with them for two years. She makes it possible for them to buy. I actually just closed a deal with her and she had been working with the client for you know 36 months, right? So I promise you there's no judgment here. We just wanna be able to help you get to a point where you're able to qualify because guess what? I am a professional real estate agent and I plan on being in the business for one year, two years, and 10 years down the road. So if it takes you one year or 10 years, I want to be that person for you. Okay, is that open? Are you closing? Are you selling? Are you providing them solutions? Yes, okay. But it's probably like one to three questions deep before they will allow you the feedback. Okay, now here's the other thing. If someone says, oh my God, I can't wait to buy, and you go, awesome, and you start talking to them, and instantaneously they say something, because this was what happens, they say something, a red flag goes up in your mind, and then instantaneously you put up a barrier. Like, you're like, so I'm not gonna go show them Robert is if I can't qualify. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna make you raise your hands, but y'all know it's true, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? They mentioned something about like, oh yeah, I think I have like a 580 credit score. And you're like, <clears throat> right, like, you should get pre-qualified first, right? Instead of going, oh my God, this is so exciting. I'm so excited for you. Let's set up that home search. Let's get them what they want, mm -hmm. right? Set up, and so here's the best strategy for that, because no, I don't want you wasting your time showing people who can't qualify, but if you don't give people what they want, they will find somebody else. And what they want is an appointment to go see properties. Now, here's the deal. You set up the appointment to go see properties like 72 hours later. 
And then you say, great, now I need you to do a couple of things so that we're prepared to submit an offer. And that is, I need you to get, speak to my loan officer, because she's gonna get us all the things that we need for financing, right? And then you need to give them a list, right? And then that's how you set parameters. And I need 24 hours to set up all of these appointments. You set up an explanation that makes sense for them. I've gotta call and book these people. Typically, most showings need 24 hours in advance. Like, most people have no idea how the process works. So if you say that you need 24 hours to schedule showings, which is true in most cases, mm -hmm. right? They will be reasonable, so long as you what? And you booked the appointment up front, okay? Now, here's big mistakes that people make. They do not close. Closing is booking the appointment, okay? So write this down, because this is one of those things that like, ugh, it breaks my heart when I hear this from you guys. You'll have like the best thing ever. You meet the sweetest couple at an open house. You walk them through. You think you have so much rapport, you know, about their grandma in Alaska and their newborn <laughs> child's name. Like you guys are homies, you think. And then they never pick up your calls, right? Here's what happened. You didn't close. You didn't set up the very next step. So 60% of the population, guys, are what would they call obligers. They're passive referral people. And here's the deal, they don't really, they're kind of neutral. And the way you close them is you just get them to the next step as quickly as possible. If they have to wait for you to send them a home search, wait for you to call them back and book an appointment, wait for you to do something, you've now opened it up to having somebody with a stronger opinion influence them. Because here's what happens, that lovely couple who really liked you goes home and they go, oh my God, we just saw this house and it was amazing and blah, 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 and all these things. And then the person goes, well, you know Aunt Martha's a real estate agent, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna use Aunt Martha? <gasps> you know, and then they start feeling the social pressure, they have to see these people again, they just met you one time, right? And, then, and they have no balls, so they're never gonna pick up your call again, right? That is what happens, right? That is what happens, so now, here's the deal. It is very hard for somebody to break an appointment they've already set with you, okay? Because most people fear that somebody is not gonna like them, right? So if they have to call you and cancel their appointment, that's like a really big barrier of entry. Or like if you've made them sign something, right? What's the first thing that real estate agents ask a client that they know has been out with somebody else? Do you have a buyer agreement? Yeah. You might not have them sign anything, right? But just say, this is my buyer agreement, right? That client's gonna go, well, I, I think I signed a buyer agreement, right? Then you kind of go, oh, I can't really work with you, right, in your mind? Mm -hmm. Like, this is what happened. So you gotta get them to that next spot as soon as possible, book the appointment, give them what they want, okay? Don't make the common mistake, like, I'll do it when I get home, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll call you, you're gonna lose the lead. And then you're gonna feel like crap because you really felt that that person liked you. And you're gonna feel lied to, you're gonna be confused, right? Like, look, I have never met somebody who is not an emotional salesperson. You guys take everything personal, okay? So do I, right? I take everything personal, okay? So just know it. Okay, so you're either moving towards something or you're moving away from something. Does everyone get this? but you always have to sound enthusiastic and energetic, 100% of the time. If you are not confident in what you are selling, you have to practice. Like this is one of those things that people do not invest in. So when I first started in phone sales, the first week I got hung up on like an insane amount. And it really gave me a whole lot of fear, but I was, I was moonlighting as a telemarketer and my day job was a receptionist. So I was like, well, crap. Like my options need to improve here so I'm gonna have to get better at sales. <laughs> so every single day, and I had um, cassette tapes. Do you remember cassette tapes? <laughs> yeah. Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn cassette tapes in my car and I'm practicing, practicing, practicing scripts, right? Because it was important for me to say this. So now I'm great at leaving a voice mom. It's like, hey, is that, it's Lizzie Hofer. Give me a buzz, right? I can say that without anything. I can typically come up with a script in five minutes because I practice it all the time. 
Now, this year, the real estate market is predicted as being 30% lower, okay? That is a fact. I know some of us are confused because it got a little bit busy because interest rates went down, right? But I promise you, this is a shift market year and do not be confused. We are gonna have shifting markets, which means that we have to get really good at practice. So I would recommend, guys, 15 to 30 minutes every single day practicing in the mirror in your car. Like, I practice scripts in my car because there's no one around me, right? I don't feel embarrassed. And like, no one can really see me because I'm I mean, most people are like, you know, they might think I'm talking on speakerphone, I'm not sure. Right? But you're really getting your, your reps in. How many of you practice scripts in your car? Okay. Well, cool. Now, a bunch of you are now going to what? Practice. Okay, cool. I love it. Okay. So just a couple more things, guys. So people are decision makers three ways. They either make a decision in their gut, they make a decision with their head, or they make a decision with their heart. Okay? That's it. If you do not respect their sales language, right, you've messed up. So that's this one. Okay? So you have to know. So here's the deal. Gut decision makers are the ones that hang up on you in 30 seconds or less. Okay? You didn't meet their gut check. They're also the people that call and say, hey, Mary, I need to see this house on 123 Main Street. Okay? Now, if you say, well, I can't show you that house, what do you think is going to happen? Well, click. They're going to call someone else. Say, great, I'd love to show you that property, okay? Let's set an appointment for how many days? Two or three days, right? I need about 24 hours to confirm that appointment. Um, now, I need a little bit of basic information from you, okay? Do you see, you gave him what he wanted, you calmed him down, now you're gonna ask for the basic information, okay? Do not do this any other way with a gut person, okay? If you give them too much information, like you then start talking about the neighborhood and trying to get more details from them, they will feel like you're being, they're being sold to mm -hmm. and their biggest fear is being taken advantage of. Okay, so you gotta keep it short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Give them what they want, mm -hmm. tell them what the time frame is, give, set the expectation, and then get whatever info you need guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are you guys familiar with the LP Mama script? LP? LP Mama? Location, price, motivation, agent, mortgage, appointment. Okay, if you are not, I need you to sign in with Sammy, we'll email it to you today. But that's the script you do at the end of setting the appointment and giving them what they want. I will absolutely show you that property. I need about 24 hours to set that up. In the meantime, can I get a little few more details from you? Is this the area that you're looking in? Right? Is this the price point that you're looking in? Why is that important to you? Okay, you need to find out people's whys, mm -hmm. right? Typically you have to ask three why questions, right? To really build deep rapport, okay? Once you find out location and motivation, right? The three whys, then it's price, right? So in this price point, great. Are you paying cash, right? Or have you been looking with an agent, right? Or how are you finding properties? People are gonna say they're looking with an agent, finding them online, whatever. Okay, are you paying cash or getting financing? Okay, do not assume everyone needs a mortgage. Right. And do not assume that some people are paying cash. Right, so just ask cash or financing. It'll be very flattering, even if it's a first time home buyer, that you ask them if they're paying cash. Like, oosh, they need cash money. <laughs> right? Um, it's true. Okay, so then once they say that they are financing, great, have you already been pre-qualified? If not, you're gonna go ahead and recommend the Lizzie Hover team, and then you're gonna go ahead and set your appointment, okay? So LP Mama, we do it on every single one, Sammy will send you that script, okay? It's brilliant. Now with an emotional person, right, someone's gonna be like, they're just gonna spill their guts out. Oh my God, yes, we're moving into this school district. My daughter, she just started kindergarten. We're so excited. We've always been driven to ride this neighborhood for the last five years. I mean, that's how they just start spilling information. Mm -hmm. You just straight up start writing it down. Just like, great, that's awesome. Is there anything else? Well, what would you like to see in the home, right? What would you like to do? Why this property? They will just gush details, okay? 
Here's how you sell somebody with emotion, okay? You help them see the vision, okay? These are the people that you go, this is where your Christmas tree is gonna go, <laughs> right? Right, can you see, like your kids are jumping in the pool? Like, that's how you sell them, right? But you gotta build that vision, oh my God, North Central Phoenix, amazing, the restaurants are awesome, the school is awesome. I mean, you go there, right, these people will love it, but you gotta reinforce their emotions, okay? Um, now, head people, oh my goodness. They're gonna be, start with fears, right? They're gonna be very reserved. You always have to ask what kind of information would they like for you to send to them, okay? What kind of information would you like for me to send to you prior to our scheduling our appointments? I can tell you how rare it is that people actually send information about the neighborhoods and properties. And I'm not talking about the MLS listings. I'm talking about actual information to borrowers before they actually go and shop. A C personality will love this, okay? They will also love an in-person consultation to walk them through the process. Right, so if somebody starts with lots of fears, right, book an in-person appointment first, right? People, like we bring most 65% of all of our borrowers into the office because they have lots of fears. Getting a mortgage is actually the second most stressful event in a person's life and first is death of a family member, okay? And it is short-term processes with so many people involved with deadlines. So you bring them into the office, you explain the process, you do that, I promise you, you're gonna be like, two out of 10 real estate agents that comes out. Okay, this is the way you differentiate. So does anyone have any confusions with this? Okay, now, how many of you are familiar with the DISC test? Great, how many of you have taken a DISC test on yourself? Okay, take a DISC test on yourself. It's super important that you know your own communication style because like love languages, right? How many of you are familiar with love languages? Cool, I love this class. Um, so, typically people communicate in the form that they like receive communication, right? So if you're a D, you're gonna communicate like a D, and you are gonna scare off your S and your C's. But you're like, just do it, you know? Right, it's probably not a really great sales tactic unless you're an obliger, you're like, okay, right? So just know that, right? So here, this is something to tape to wherever you make your phone calls. You need to identify all of your clients, right? So a D personality is gonna be aggressive, right, and logical. So write that down above D. Aggressive and logical. Okay. Uh, an emotional person is, or excuse me, an I is gonna be emotional and non-logical. Okay, like they don't care about the you know the house not appraising, they just want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean an S is gonna be emotional and logical, right? So you just have to tell them what the next step is and logically explain it, they'll be good. And a C is going to be non- uh, or non-aggressive um, non and logical. Sorry, there we go. So they have a ton of questions, but they might be too scared to ask you. These are the people that have a hard time making a decision. Okay. Did you say non-logical in that one? Or no, not? it's logical and non-aggressive. So non-aggressive and logical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when they pick up the phone, when we're talking about tonality, it's like, I need the sales price for, is what? D, yes, right, it's a D. Okay, oh my God, this house is beautiful, is what? Hi. Okay, I'm really nervous about the process. What's the next step? Okay, I'd really love to know uh, the neighborhood demographics for X. Okay. Now, those were really, you know, probably like a hyperbole of what that would sound like an exaggeration, but that should, I'm glad everyone got the concepts, okay? 
If you didn't grasp the concept, I think the class is also available on YouTube and you can just rewatch it. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay, so I feel like we've covered this. Do you guys feel like we got this? Cool. So I'm going to cross this one out. Yay. Okay. So what the heck is branding? Who can just shout out what you think branding is? A recognizable entity that someone would recognize you for. Someone would recognize you for it. Your image. Your image. Okay, what else? Online presence. Online presence. Perception. Perception. Cool. So most of the time people think branding is a logo. I'll be honest with you. People are like, my logo, my website, my Instagram photos. Right? This is like what I get. Um, branding is actually what people know you for. It's the promises that you make to clients. Okay, so write that down. Branding is the promises that you make to clients, what you're known for. Okay, now why is this important in scripting? Okay, why it's important in scripting is because you're gonna get a whole lot of objections. Okay, and if you don't know what your brand stands for, how can you provide solutions? Seriously, like how would you be able to provide solutions? So I'm gonna do a little bit of an exercise because I want you to understand what this means because you're gonna have to figure out what this means for you, okay? So who can give me a good example of a brand that you understand their promises? Like you understand what they're about? Coca-Cola. Okay, and why do we think Coca-Cola? Here, I just want to know this. It, I, I just know the taste of it, it's consistent. I don't know what I'm gonna get when I open that can. Okay, now I'm gonna challenge this thought. No, 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 it's good. I'm so grateful that you did this. I thank you so much. So no, no wrong answer here. Well, I mean, <laughs> you are great. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. If Coca-Cola was to venture off and build a hotel, what would that hotel be like? Red and white. Red and white. Okay, what else? They would only serve Coke there. They would only serve Coke there. What else? There might be winter theme, polar bears. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? All age groups drink soda. So all age groups can stay there. They have lots of fun. <laughs> it might be fancy? Yeah. Okay. Now, it's okay. So my, I, I used to feel like Coca-Cola represented fun, right? I don't feel like they have carried out that brand strategy. Mm -hmm. So I feel like right now it's just a really good example of a Coca, of like a soda product. Okay, now you mentioned Nike, did I get that? Okay, so now if Nike, Nike does athletic equipment, uh, athletic apparel for both men, women, children, right? Um, you know, they're a sponsor of most major athletic events, okay? Now, if Nike was to have a hotel, what would that look like? A lot of gyms. There'd be gyms, what else? TVs. TVs, sports, sports, sports. Yeah. lots of outdoor activities. Lots of outdoor activities. Probably, probably be people. healthy, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Not Coke. Right? Not you Coke. see how like <laughs> you could almost envision this hotel, and you're like, why the heck hasn't Nike built a hotel? I'd stay there for real, right? Like I thought about this, and I'm like, okay. And then I thought about, well, what if Hilton built a shoe? Boxy <laughs> Square. I was like, I have no idea what that shoe would look like. I have no idea what it would be. I, I mean, I'm thinking white sneaker. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, do you see the difference between a product and a brand? Mm -hmm. Okay, you are real estate agents. Okay, it's fairly easy for you guys to be a product versus a brand. Mm -hmm. Right? And I would say that most consumers today are a little bit confused on what you do. Right? They think you just search properties that they can search online. Yes or no? Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have to figure out what separates you from just a realtor, right? And what you're consistently promising. Now, I'm not saying that we are perfect, but here's what my brand stands for, okay? So I. So my brand stands for quality in mortgages and quality in business throughout, right? So I, I typically inspire women entrepreneurs, that's typically the people that follow me. 
Um, and so if you saw my brand and you got my prequel, my hope is that you would say, oh, this is gonna close on time, we're gonna get great communication, they, she guarantees it, right, because we have a $500 close guarantee, right? And you know that I'm about quality, right? Would you say, if you have, if you've heard of me and you haven't done a deal with me, like Mary, you've never done a deal with me, but is that what you think of me? Mm -hmm. For real though? For real. Yeah, right? For real. No, for, real. for real. I just want to, I'm, I, you know, because I said that and then I kind of made it. And, I, but no, and, and I've been considering. Considering, okay. Trying Ooh. because because of that, because it's it's just been so consistent from the time that I started with my home group. Your message has never changed. Yes. It's sure. always been, you know, the highest quality of customer service and information and follow through and yeah. Thank you. No. And so for me, because I'm all about high quality and I'm all about education, it's not weird for me to teach you a business class, would you say? Yeah. Right? But it's strange, like if you really thought about the concept, I'm a loan officer teaching business concepts. Like most people would be like, wait, shouldn't a loan officer be teaching financing? Right? But my brand isn't 100% about mortgages. It's about education. So I do money tips, I do business tips, I do scripting tips. Right? It's about high quality. It's about a wow process, right? Like, I want people to emote the sense of I care. Do you know what I mean? So, when people say, why Lizzie? Well, one, they're going to go, she really cares. She guarantees all of her closings with $500 to the buyer and seller. Right? That's something that nobody else does. She really cares. She updates you bi weekly on Tuesdays and Fridays. Right, she really cares, because guess what? She never says no. That's a literal policy in my office. We never say no. It's how and when, right? Because let me tell you, it's always how and when, okay? Right, and so when people go, well, I need a quick close. Great, Lizzie cares. She guarantees a 26-day close. Faster, right? And they have something to compare it to, okay? Because here's the deal. A lot of times with branding, people want to use generic words like, I'm honest. Right, I have great communication. I have blah, blah, blah. But if no one's marketing, I never communicate with you. Right, I'm terribly dishonest. You can count on me for lying to you. <laughs> you cannot brand yourself that way because there's no opposite, mm -hmm. okay? So when we get objections, what's like a number one objection that you get? From what? From, from anything, from listing your house or buying. Are you having Okay, well, I, I feel let's not go with that one because that's like an ethical thing, right? Are you not allowed to like coach other people's clients? Right. Okay, I'm just making sure. I don't 100% know. In lending, it's a little different. It's like a free for all. That's good. Um, but I would say like, not right now. Right? That's something like, oh yes, but like in 12 months. Does anyone hear that? Okay, so let's say not right now. What else? What about, I can't qualify? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do people use the market? So, uh, they're waiting for it to get lower. Mm -hmm. So yeah, much yeah, objection, yeah, but on yeah. the topic of uh, like setting that first um, search with them, what if what if that out of town? Like people who are out of town, so they can't go looking today or next week or whenever. You know, you can do what you can to get your. So they're out of state. Or just yeah, out of state. Yeah. Okay. What about the rejection of them just disappearing on you? Like, so that's not one you can help with scripting. Like, here's the one thing that I have found with people who ghost me. And I swear to God this works. It's only not worked once, and it did work eventually. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I send two cricket emojis. <laughs> I've literally texted them and said, are you disappearing on me? And they're like, no, no, no. And eventually that gets their attention. But I'm like, I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I straight up send two cricket emojis. So here's my thing. Did I drop the ball mm -hmm. is yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, two cricket emojis. And then the very last thing I say to people who I, are you giving up? Mm. Right? Are you giving up kind of is a little aggressive. You know, so I either want you to get pissed or like embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Is it basically right. no? I didn't use you as like a response I want to see, or oh my god, no! I'm definitely not giving up, right? Like you want to emote something, and it has to be kind of strong and bold. 
Right, because you want them to respond, not just, eh, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I want one or the other, right? Like, I want to know that I'm going to continuously market to you or not. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but, but you can't use any, like, real phone scripting. But I promise you, the two cricket emoji guys, it makes people laugh. And I get a response within seconds. And it's normally a positive one. Like, it's normally like, oh, my God, I know I needed to get back to you. Right? Yeah, thanks. Try it today, and then I swear to God, you'll laugh. Like, people always laugh. Unless they I'll have a sense of humor. Okay. Oh, you're going to do it? Yeah, do, do it. Right yeah. OK. So let's use these four, right, because these are four objections. Mm -hmm. OK, so what can you fix with branding when somebody says, not right now? Well, so I don't know about fixing. Well, when you say fixing with branding, I'm So this is the thing. They said, not right now. I think you can hold that, but as far as, okay, well, I understand that you're not looking right now, but if they're, the purpose is to look at sometime in the future, we can set up your search to mirror what it is you want to look at, look for at that time. So I'm going to go into actual scripting for what, how you close this person, but what within branding, right, what within branding can let, you get? Let me do your research. Okay, so not right now means like sometime in the future. So, awesome. I have been a real estate agent for 16 years. I plan on being a real estate agent for the next 16 years. I have a really great follow-up process with updates on the market, with uh, details to home search. Even when you're not ready, it's just good for you to see what's available on the market in case things change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're establishing expertise with length in the market and a proven follow-up process, okay? Like, this is essential, a proven follow-up process, right? And you're telling them you're consistent and you won't forget them. That's what that's saying about your brand. Consistent, won't forget them, and proven. Does that make sense in branding? So that when people say that, no worries. I have a consistent, proven process for follow-up that, I, you know, it's non-invasive. It's going to allow you to search properties on your flex time, show you things that are available to you, and I'm gonna give you market research, like market information. So people who say this to me, do, have you guys seen my Money Tip Mondays? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a Money Tip Monday thing every Monday, and I say, great, well just so you know, I've done mortgages forever, and I like to be a resource for all things money, not just mortgage. Do you mind if I sign you up for this? You'll get it every single Monday, and then when you're ready, you just let me know, right? Like, you just, you're still converting them. I'm still getting them in my database, right? And I'm being educational, right? They're not just the mortgage to me, right? I really care about more than just the home loan, okay? Did, is this, it'll probably hit when we get to like the fourth one, but does this make sense? Yeah, it does, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So then can't qualify. What's a something that you can solve with I cannot qualify? You know, perfect lender that could give you all the information you need. Right? Again, here's what I would leverage, right? Your partners, right? So you have, like if you're my partner, like I'm the number one female loan officer in the country, like that says that I have expertise and that I work with clients forever to eternity and you have this super consistent follow-up process that'll make sure that they are staying on track and that you don't forget about them, okay? So you have, you can leverage partners because you work with the best and you have a consistent, awesome follow-up process that will not forget them and will provide them with helpful tips. Okay? Now here's the thing, guys. You may go in your mind, but I don't have a, a process <laughs> that follow up with help and with credit tips. Okay? What's one thing that you can do today or start today, one week at a time? You can start a monthly email, mm -hmm. right? You can start a weekly YouTube thing. You can record a thing on your phone, right? But it's easy. So I didn't always have a YouTube channel. I set out one day and said, you know what? We probably need this. And so every Friday I just record a video. That's it. That's it, right? And the people who start today, they have no idea. And the new people who will start, who have never gotten this, you're like, great, I'm now doing this. It's just another feature to support your brand, okay? But you can, I would leverage, you have great tips, you're an expert in finance, you work with experts in finance, and that if it's not today, no worries, you're gonna work with them two years from now and you're not gonna forget them. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
these people feel rejected, okay? So they just want somebody who won't reject them. And let me tell you, when you can help somebody, like I helped a, a man last uh, week who had been trying to be a homeowner for eight years, okay? And the only way he could qualify is we gave him a lender credit for like $1,000 and he cried, okay? That guy is going to be like my best referral partner, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Because we care, and guess what? I now have this awesome story to tell other people. Like, let me tell you about Lee, right? When people say that about you and then you tell them that anecdote, okay? So you can have a proven process that shows people you care, you work with experts, and oh, by the way, let me tell you about this story. Okay, do you guys each have a story where you went above and beyond for somebody that was maybe borderline? Mm -hmm. For those of you who are new, you're probably on a team that has a success story of somebody who helped that was on the borderline. If they don't, leverage your lender partners. Let me tell you, you can find something. Okay, or ad adapt a policy like, well, no worries, we don't say no here, it's how or when. Right, we don't say no here. Okay, you guys should be stealing that. Mm -hmm. We don't say no. That's what I tell clients when I'm talking to them and they say, well, I can't qualify and we talk about going to the lender. And I said, you know, even if it's not right now, you'll know when. Absolutely, yes, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going, oh, okay, no worries. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> no, okay, no worries. I'll talk to you next year when you qualify. Yeah. You can call me back. Right. <laughs> call me back. Yeah. Call me back when you're ready. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you say with the market? I have one of those right now. Okay, here's the deal, guys. You need to know what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me tell you, I have studied the market for the past 16 years and I have seen it ebb and flow. And the one thing that I can tell you, as a matter of fact, is that it's never a bad time to buy real estate. There's only bad times to sell. So let me tell you what's going on in the market right now. Okay, so what does it say is that you study the market. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you, even though this is something that nobody would necessarily advertise that they don't study the market, nobody is saying it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying it. So you can market something that nobody says they do. Like I've seen a couple of market um, videos and like none of them really know what's going on. They just read the Crawford report really quickly and then they just said whatever was on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but like if you really knew what was going on, like if you say a statement that says, hey, like, I have studied the market for the past 16 years, it's never a bad time to sell, and then, you know, it's, or to never buy. a bad time to, to buy. buy, it's only a bad time to sell, right? That tells them, like, okay, well, maybe, right? And you can tell them, again, another anecdotal story. So, I owned a townhome in, about in 2006 at the height of the market. When I got married, my husband kept pressuring me to sell it, because he's like, oh my gosh, this is like, a money pit, you gotta sell it. And after several years of him badgering me, I sold it for like way under market, we lost a bunch of money. And it like always made me cringe. And then last year I was like, do you know we would have been 15 years into a 30 year mortgage? Right, like do you know this right now? And I probably could sell it right now with equity. Like, do you know this? And then I say, don't make this, I won't let you make the same mistakes as me, right? So you can say what like the market, you can be a market expert, you can know, like honestly it's ebbs and flows. Here's the deal, when the market is good and cheap, let me tell you, interest rates are typically high. Right. Yeah. What we right. saw the last right. time in that the market like was down and interest rates were down, well guess what, they were stimulating the economy after the worst economic thing that has happened to us in 20 years, mm -hmm. okay? We're not in that kind of market. Mm -hmm. So right now what we're seeing, it's a seller's market, Right, and interest rates have now gone down because it's a seller's market. So it's cheaper to get financing right now that homes are more expensive. Like this is an actual fact, right? Believe it or not, it doesn't. the price of the home matters less than what the interest rate is. Right. Okay, that's how you spin it. The year before when interest rates were like a, a percent lower, you could actually save like a hundred and it was like $90 on your mortgage, right? Like that's a really big deal, okay? But that's how you spin it, right? Now, if we're in a market that's going down and interest rates are going up, guess what? You're getting a deal. You're gonna earn more equity, okay? There's always something, but you have to know the market. Mm -hmm. You have to be an expert in the market. 
you have to say what you know, okay? And you have to study the market. You can say, I read the Cromford Report daily. Let me tell you, I subscribe to this. I'm a member, I analyze it. I've met with Tina Tambor, who's a top statistician in all of the marketplace. You can leverage your partners. Does that sound educated, yes or no? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, so out-of-state buyers, okay? What part of your brand can you do to help out-of-state buyers? Like, what kinds of things can you do that are out of the ordinary? FaceTime, FaceTime. properties. Yeah. You can FaceTime properties, right? You can show them homes, right? You can have a buyer consult. You can agree to pick them up at the airport, mm -hmm. right? You can do all kinds of things. You can show for their family member around, right? There's all kinds of things. Well, let me tell you, I helped 30 <laughs> out-of-state buyers last year. I am definitely a relocation specialist. On top of being able to preview properties for you via FaceTime, I can also set you up with the right moving company, the right furniture company, the right, you know, set up all your utilities for you, right? Those are all things that you could do above and beyond. Mm -hmm. So I know that this exercise is new to you, right? And so the very things that are gonna come up are kind of basic, right? So write them down anyway, and then go, how can I plus one this? Right? So if somebody is from here from out of state, they're gonna need resources. They don't have resources, they don't have a network, but you do. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, I will help you relocate, have the best network ever. I can get you set up with plumbers, contractors, a mover, insurance, you name it, I've got you. I've been a resident of Phoenix for the last 20 plus years, right? So here's the deal. You need to list all of your services every single service, even your lockbox, okay? Even the basic ones, because here's the deal. So I was with a client who was stressed out of her mind because she was selling her house and she felt like she had very special belongings, right? And she just kept saying this to me. She's like, I want to be present for every showing. And she said it to me so many times. I said, did your real estate agent tell you that she carries the top of the line in lockboxes? She's like, no, what's a lockbox? Well, let me tell you, it registers every single person who enters your house. So if God forbid something happened to you, they will track them down, I promise you. And then I thought, why did they not talk to her about this? Mm -hmm. Like, I, if she said it three times to me, let me tell you, she said it a whole bunch of times to them. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. they're not thinking of how to brand themselves. Well, I was just gonna add on to that. Sometimes it's just not asking the questions. So if you're in that situation when someone says that, if you're the list agent, you're not saying, well, what's important about that to you? Well, and sometimes people won't say this. So this is really helpful. So I'm gonna, cause this is what's gonna go into closing skills right now. So does this all make sense? Write down a list of all your stuff plus one it, okay? So for me, 26 day close, guarantee my closings, bi-weekly communication, right? Like those are all things people know my brand. I'm all about education. Right? So now you can attribute those things. I hope they're examples for you. Okay? So now we're going to go to closing types. Okay? Okay? So a couple things you're not going to do anymore. I never want you to say, I'm checking in, I'm following up, or how are you? Write that down. And then I'm going to need you to solemnly swear you're never going to do that. Okay? Here's why. It's super inauthentic. Unless you're somebody's mother or their doctor, do you really care how they're doing? Really, you don't, right? It's just that buffer sentence because you don't know what else to say and you just feel comfortable jumping right into it. I promise you that's gonna check someone's gut. Like, you don't care about me. Mm -hmm. So just go, hey, I'm calling with a property. Hey, I'm calling to see how the home search is going. Right? right? That's something you legitimately care about. Straight up. So, can I get you to raise your right hand for me, please? Okay, I do solemnly promise. I will never do check ins again. I never am going to do check ins again. Never do check ins again. Okay. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Okay. Yeah, you just promised. Never going to do it. And your brand says you don't break your word. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. I've written down these closings, right, in order of how hard they are, okay? So this one's the hardest one. 
So your C personalities, guys, they're the hardest to close, period, the end. Okay, they're the most scared, the most fear, they need the most attention, and like, most of us are not Cs, okay? So that's how this goes. So here's the deal. You can tell if somebody is a C, right, if they won't sign the listing agreement, they won't sign the offer. So this is the person who has a ton of fears, but they haven't said it out loud because they're not confident. Remember, this is a non-aggressive questioner to death. Okay, that's maybe the lady with the lockbox questions. You know what I mean? So here's what happens. So they haven't signed, right, and they're kind of being weird, right, and we can't get them to sign. Here's what you say. Is there any more information that I can send you? Right? And then they will just tell you what information they need. Like that would have been, actually I'm really concerned about the cash of sta uh, the stash of cash I have under my mattress getting stolen. Right, like that's when that weird stuff's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. Right, like right then and there. Right, so is there any more information I can send you? Okay, then once you provided them, right, or knowing what you know now, this is actually what I use in lending, so knowing what you know now, what's holding you back? So what's holding you back? So they will tell you what they need to know. Once you've solved those things, it's an if this, then that close. So if you're telling me that you want to find a property for $300,000 in a down mountain ranch with three bedrooms and two baths, if I find that for you, you will sign, right? So if I can get you $2,000 in closing costs, you will sign. So if I can do blah, 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 then you will sign. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you do not close it, well then you will sign, right? That 60% of the population who like cannot commit to anyone, they will leave, right? They won't close, you have to close them, right? So here's the deal. You have to make it happen timely, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to make it happen timely. C personalities are very scared, okay? I also use, depending on how scared these people are, an obligation close, right? So how many of you have written an offer at like 10 p.m. on your computer because the people were only available at 7 p.m. and you went out of your normal business hours to go show them a property in Buckeye, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like an hour from where you live. It's only like 180,000. You're just like, ah, you know, but you're writing it at 10 p.m., okay? And then all of a sudden, they're getting a little like weird on you. So this is an obligation close. Hey, so I'm so excited that we got that deal done. I showed you the property at 7 p.m. We beat out all of the other buyers. I'm so excited that we stayed up till 10 p.m. writing the offer. I'm so excited that I had the lender call and make this happen for you, right? Like, I'm so excited that this happened, okay? Right? I need you to go ahead and sign this. That's how this happens. Mm -hmm. It's called an obligation close, yeah. right? Like, I feel like sometimes people get a little bit wishy-washy. You show them 60 properties, you've done all these oh, things, yeah. and they start getting weird. And it's like, well, no, 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 let's remember, when you needed a prequel at 9 p.m., I was there. Oh, and oh, by the way, I called and sold you to the listing agent, and my, my good name got you pre-approved, right? I feel like I've earned your business. That's the closing line to that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've earned your business. People don't have the balls to say no after you remind them everything that you've done to, for them. Like, do you have said it to clients? Heck yeah. Yeah? I've also said it to realtors, yes. I feel like if I've gone above and beyond for you multiple times, hey. Yeah. Like, I get called a lot of times to just rescue deals. Sure. And after the third one, I'm like, dude, I'm rescuing all of your deals. I've bailed you out. I've bumped other files in front of you. I've like really mm -hmm. helped you out with the lender credit, I feel like I've earned your business. Yeah. yeah. Do I sound out of line? No, not at all. No. Right? It's reasonable. Mm -hmm. You just have to get used to saying it. Probably a good one to practice in your car. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, you deserve this close. Mm -hmm. Okay? A lot of people have buyer's remorse. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, well, at least they call us and they definitely have buyer's remorse. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> the second they get under contract, they're like panicked, nervous wrecks. I have one right now. And you go, hey, I got you. Getting a mortgage is the second most stressful event in a person's life, but you deserve this, mm -hmm. right? This is your house. You just told us about your Christmas tree and the kids playing in the backyard. You got this. It's like 30 days of pain. You can handle this. You are stronger than you think, 
I have pep talks all the time with people crying with me on the phone. Just happens, okay? I have to remind them that this is good for them and I'm not selling them. I truly believe that this is the right choice. Buying property is the right choice, okay? Um, puppy dog pose. Again, this is that one where, here's the Christmas tree. Look out to the backyard. Oh my God, this is gonna look amazing with your furniture, okay? Uh, list summary clothes. This is also for your C personalities. Okay. So why I mentioned that you deserve me in the puppy dog clothes, most people hate being a cheesy salesperson, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, get this. Sometimes it's your job to help people see a vision beyond themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's just what happens. How many of you have gone into a store, right, and you said, I'm only going to pay this, I'm only going to pay this, I'm not even going to talk to these people, I'm only going to do this, and then you've met somebody and they sold you way better thing than you were looking for. You leave and you're like, God, I love Ted. And I love this car, right? <laughs> and then, or you met the person you're like, blinders on, blinders on. They gave you everything you wanted, but you still feel dirty, okay? Mm -hmm. That's because that person didn't help you feel good about your purchase, and one did, mm -hmm. okay? So you have to help people get beyond their like mindset issues. People have money mindset issues. They don't feel deserved. They feel weird. I mean, you don't know what happened in their childhood, but I promise you, they need your help getting over the hump, okay? Mm -hmm. Buying real estate is the largest investment that they will make probably in their life. So yes, it's going to take a little bit of sales skills. Yes, emotional coaxing. You have to get comfortable with that. It's your job. Okay? Because if you don't, guess what? Someone else did. All right, so now this summary close. So a C personality needs to know that all the boxes are checked, mm -hmm. right? So they want to know it's in the right neighborhood for the right price, for the right offer, and the right time frame. So you have to go, hey, remember that list you gave me? So McDowell Mountain Ranch, 300,000, three bedrooms, two bath. Well, check, 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 check. Okay? Now that we have found your house that meets all of your criteria, I need you to go ahead and sign. Okay, I am so excited for you, congratulations. Did this meet all your criteria? They're gonna go, yes, this is all your criteria. Did it meet all your criteria? Yes, yes, go ahead and sign. Okay, you cannot over talk. If you talk to a questioner and give them too much information, you will never close them, period. So sometimes it's a list summary close, right? I didn't close them, so they're not telling me something, then it's like, what other information can I send you? Great, if I do this, then we close, right? Sometimes it's a two-stepper, okay? All right, takeaway close. So these are for those people that drive me nuts, they don't follow my sales process, and I'm willing to fire them, okay? You have to be legitimately willing to fire them or this one does not work, okay? So what is the key to that one? Oh, you didn't get it? You have to be willing to follow them. Yeah, good, I just wanna make sure, okay? So you have to be willing to walk away. So you have to say, all right, I'm so sorry. You're not following my process. You're not listening to me. You're not wanting to make offers the way that they need to be presented. We're going $50,000 asking price on every single one. We're getting beat out. We're just wasting time. Mm -hmm. So unless you start taking my guidance, we can no longer work together. Probably another one to practice in your car. <laughs> okay. Assumption close. Write this down, circle it, it works for 60% of all people, okay? Just get them to the next step. So it goes, here's the next step. The next step is, here's what we do now, right? Do you see all of those different versions of this is the next step, right? Assuming the close, right? They're already working with you, get them to the next step, okay? And then the option close, guys. This is primarily for your D people that need a gut decision, that need to feel that they are in control. When you give people an option close, you are in control because you control the options. But they have to say which option they're choosing. Okay? Does that all make sense? Cool. All right, so these are all your closings. Now, this guy, we've talked about this in detail throughout all of these things. I'm now gonna talk to you about advanced skills and you can read this specifically to get the exact instructions. But basically, how many of you guys do a really great job? Okay, how many of you do a really great job? For real, if you're not saying that, you better start today, okay? So here's the deal, most of you will wait till after the job is completed to ask for a referral, yes or no? Okay, 
you miss so many opportunities to capture more referrals. So just, how, are any of you familiar with what's called a reticular activator? Okay, mm -hmm. so when you go buy a car, all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere. It's because your mind is constantly looking at solving that problem, so it's more aware of those things. The same way that when people are buying and selling, they're now more aware of people buying and selling. They look at real estate things. They're just hyper aware. Most people who are in a transaction of buying and selling know three other people that are potentially looking at the same time. If you wait until after the purchase is made, that decreases by 80% and then after a month, it's gone. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to figure out when you're asking, and it should be from the time they book the initial appointment with you to way after closing, okay? So here's how it goes. You have to set expectations for what you're gonna do, which is your brand, right. okay? Then you have to cons you know, consistently ask for it. You have to be super consistent. So if I do this, then I'm going to be asking you for referrals. I will only know that I did a good job if you give me a referral. Can I count on you for at least one referral if I do a kick at butt job, find you your dream home, and close on time, can I count on you to refer my services to one person? Right? Look, I know it sounds aggressive, practice it in your car, but you gotta get good. Here's my referral process. Literally, they sit down and meet with us, there's a who do you know form in the package when they're filling out information. You would be shocked, these people have only had one conversation with us and they just fill it out. You know why? Because <laughs> it's 60% of the population just does what they're told. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? Can I get you to raise your hands? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Did I just tell you what to do? Yeah. Okay, did you just do it because I asked you? No. Right? Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that during my buyer's yeah. conversation. It's good. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. Like, the study that, there was a study I read that talks about that, and like, waiting in line at a copier. Like, if you just ask, may I put in line? The people will let you because you asked for it. There's no reasoning whatsoever. Yes, it's crazy how many times. So here's the deal. You're going to set the expectation with your brand strategy. And you're going to listen for cues. Anytime somebody says, wow, thank you so much. This was so easy. You know, right? Like anytime they give you a positive cue, you're gonna be like, I am so excited that we got this done in 26 days. Remember this, I promised you I was gonna do X, Y, and Z. Is it appropriate now for me to ask you for that referral? Is it okay now if I ask you, right? Our Tuesday update script goes like this. Hey, they give them an update and then they go, hey, did we meet or exceed your expectations today? On a scale of one to 10, how well did we do? Are, do you have any additional questions? Is there anything additional that we can do for you? Are you sure there's nothing additional that we can do for you? Okay, now in the past week, did you hear or know anybody who was looking to buy or sell a home? Right? You would be so super surprised and they read the script, guys. These people are like basic entry, well not entry level, I mean they're awesome people that work on my team, but they're not salespeople, okay? But it's so easy, they just read a script and people give them referrals. Okay, so they do that every single Tuesday and I set the expectation in my buyer console that I'm gonna be doing this, mm -hmm. right? And I also say, guess what, after they close, I also say, hey, throughout the year, it would really mean a lot to me if you would continue to pass my name, right? You are gonna be my client for life. I hope to continue to add value to your life. I'm gonna invite you to my events. I'm gonna keep giving you money tips. I will be here if you need any kind of resource. In return, the only thing I ask is that I'm top of mind. So statistically, they say 30% of my database is gonna move or they're gonna know somebody that's gonna move. Can I count on you to send my information to at least two people throughout the year? Mm -hmm. I've never had anyone say no, especially if they're giving me a 10 service. They just now said it was okay and they know it's coming. It's been magical, okay? The other way you do it is pay attention to people's life events. Their birthdays, mm -hmm. their anniversaries, their yeah. engagements, their babies their divorces, their retirements, their promotions, every kind of life event, that means that they're going to buy or sell within the next year or two years, okay? Maybe within six months, right? It just depends on it, but they're gonna be somebody you need to keep an eye out on, right? And why you need to keep an eye out on them, because guess what? They now have a reticular activator, okay? And they know you want referrals and you're gonna be top of mind, okay? It is super <laughs> important, okay? 
on the back of this, right, there are examples for how to ask a million ways. And there's what you say to your past clients when you're doing your annual reviews, right? Okay? This is super important stuff because you still need to be of value to people even after they close. I can't even tell you that I talk to real estate agents they're like, I don't know what I would say to them a year from now. Well, how about how much their house is worth, right? Or what their neighborhood is doing, or how the property is keeping up, have they used their home warranty, et cetera, okay? You can still provide value, right? Because you have a brand, mm -hmm. okay? If you do this with every single client, I promise you, you will double your business for free, okay? You will double your business for free. Okay, so we are two minutes over time, um, but I do need to ask you a question and it's a serious one. Did I give you value today? Yes. Right. Do you think you will close another deal because of these skills? Yes. Okay. All I ask in return is that that next deal come to my team. I am not a public speaker for a living. I am a hungry loan officer, and the only way I can continue to do this is if you guys support me. So if you have not sent my team a lead, I hope that this is the, the thing that converted you over to the light side. <laughs> okay? Thank you guys awesome. so, so Thank much. You. I appreciate it. Thank you.